Hey boys and girls, we're gonna redo our video on the installation of the steering system on your kayaks. And uh, honestly, the installation should take about as long as this video. But uh, I just wanna go in a little bit more detail and make life a little simpler on you guys. So what you're gonna get in the kit, you're gonna get the cable, and you're gonna get some linkage. And if you order extra parts, we've got those, okay? That's the primary thing you're gonna get in the kit. Um, it's up to you to decide how you want to arrange your handle up front. Um, you're going to be using the inner stock of your motor since you're going to be taking your motor apart anyway. So that aluminum tube that's inside there, uh, that's, that's what's primarily going to be your handle. And then typically guys just cut the top of the handle off and put it on there and they're done. Okay. Uh, now one thing you need to know the distance between the pivot point at the bottom of your handle to the attachment point for your cable system is five inches. So you're gonna pivot point and then five inches up, you drill another hole, that's your attachment point for your cable. Okay? And that's easy peasy. So get that get that arrangement done before you do anything else. That's gonna take you the most time and thought. And every kayak is different. Um, some of these handles, like this one, you can put on the top of a boat. Um, you have to build a, build a block assembly. Other kayaks, like the Vibe back there in the background, or my uh, old 10SS, because the sides and the inside were flat, straight up and down, I was able to put a plate in on the side, and that gave me a lower profile handle. So you all need to have a little sweat equity in that, okay? So here's what you're going to do to mount this. Um, I'm assuming you're going to be rewiring your motor. So go ahead and take this whole assembly apart. Okay. And get yourself down to, just to the mount. The two pieces of the mount. The pivot and the regular mount. Okay. You're going to re you're gonna knock the pin out and you're going to drill a half inch hole through here, through this, and through that. Okay. And you want to use a regular drill bit. Don't use a spade bit because a spade bit will float on you. And if it floats too much, uh, your locking mechanism is going to not align. And you're not going to be able to lock your motor up or down. Okay, so you don't want that to happen. Okay. Now, after you drill that, this tube is still going to be just a tad big to go through. So we're going to send you a piece of aluminum and uh, with some with some uh, uh, sandpaper tape to it and you're going to use that as a flap sander and you're going to pass that through until that tube right here runs through it okay and you don't want it too loose you want a little bit of effort okay now so the next thing you're going to do just go ahead and set your motor in put this assembly back together okay and set the depth on your motor um, typically top of the motor for most guys is at about the bottom of the kayak okay that seems to be the sweet spot where it's shallow enough to not get cavitation you know deep enough to get plenty of thrust okay so you're going to set the depth okay this is your depth collar okay typically it's turned around backwards this way all right you're going to have your depth collar set your motor set straight forward so set your motor straight forward put your depth collar on and then you're going to put this assembly on your depth collar okay it's all pre-drilled so the bolt for your depth collar goes through there okay now this is set up for a left hand steer okay so if you're right handed you want a left hand stick okay and you want a right hand for your throttle control so if you're going to order one of these kits let me know if your left or right hand stick because this piece is opposite all right so you're going to take that you're going to mount it just like that on your depth control okay and then your your uh, locking your little release trigger up here you need to cut about an inch and a half off of it so it'll clear okay when you're done with that you're going to push your tube through all the way through 
Okay, this piece up front, unclip this, pull that out, pull it off, pass this all the way through to that line. Okay, that line's gonna be just outside in here. Okay? Then go ahead and push this back on, clip that back on, and put this through. So your assembly's gonna look something like that. And I apologize for this assembly. This is pretty beat up. This is about two years old. Okay? So you're gonna look like that. All right? Motor straight, motor point is straight. So you should look something like that. All right, you're gonna come around, and I've got a loose cable here, but you're gonna come around, and you're gonna go ahead, stand your stick up straight if the vertical position is where you want your stick, okay? Um, stand it up straight and go ahead and bolt this onto the stick. So you're gonna do something like that. And I've got a cover on this, okay? And you're gonna go back, double check to make sure you're straight. Lock that down back there. There's a, there's a steering lock on it. Lock it down. Come back, make sure this is straight. Lock this down. Uh, a lot of guys don't have a lock, locking mechanism on their sticks, but you could use a pair of vice grips or whatever just to make sure that stick doesn't move, okay? And then you're gonna come to the middle of your cable, and you're gonna find this little piece of aluminum with two set screws in it. It's gonna have two of these with it, okay? You're gonna put that on the top surface um, of your kayak, okay? And this slides. When you get it, this this will be able to slide, okay? Um, so you want to set it on the top surface of your kayak and then screw these down and lock it in place, okay? That stops your cable from moving back and forth under pressure, okay? Um, honestly, the farther forward you can put that that piece right there, the little aluminum piece, the better off you are, okay? But uh, midway point's fine, okay? Now, one thing you guys are gonna notice, for some of your kayaks, this assembly is gonna be a little long, okay? It's a universal fit, so for a 10 foot up to a 12 foot kayak, and the fact of the matter is, with guys putting seats in their kayaks, you just don't know how far forward they're gonna put their stick, or how far back they're gonna put their stick, or where they're gonna put it. So, you know, you can't lengthen the cable, but we can, you can definitely shorten it, and I'll show you how, okay? So get that all set up. Now, if you got a, you can see the small loop I have on my cable, okay? That's because that was custom made for this boat, okay? But you're gonna have a longer loop, okay? If your loop comes way out here, it's just way too long and too ungainly and too much to deal with, you can, run it out and then loop it back in and into that piece okay as long as it's a constant curve so you have a constant curve on that okay and then where it crosses the top of the deck right here we'll send you another one of these locks and you can lock it down on that on the deck right there okay so you may end up with a double you may end up with a double loop okay just depends on how long your kayak is and where your stick is okay so at that point you should be pretty well adjusted okay so unlock your steering what's up man oh. unlock your steering go ahead and make sure this is tightened down as much as possible okay and test your steering back and forth forward backwards forward backwards and make sure that you're getting the same swing side to side, okay? Um, if you have to make an adjustment, you can, uh, you can turn that collar a little bit, okay? And just turn that collar, make sure it's where you want it, and then you can run a small sheet metal screw into there, through there, and through the actual post of your motor okay that'll lock that in position permanently then you want to go up front and this sleeve right here this aluminum sleeve 
that's at the front of your kayak is ex I've given you guys extra length on this so you can actually shorten this if you want okay um, but this you want to pull your stick back to as far as you want it to go okay um, don't over pull it pull back as far as it goes and then you want to slide this up so it's the stop for your cable okay and then at the base of this we have a set screw I don't have the screw in this one right here but we have a set screw and you want to run that set screw in there and that will tie tie this assembly together okay so that's going to be your stop and then on the back side of this the stop for this area up here is actually on the inside but we're going to send you a little sleeve to go on the outside here if you want okay um, I don't have it on this one but uh, we'll send you a little sleeve to fill that gap if you want you can either take it on or leave it off okay when that's done you're going to have another one of these, two, two more of these, that are smaller size. They fit this tubing here. At the base where this joins up, you're going to put one and then put another one wherever you need it. Either right next to it, or depending on how your kayak's laid out, you may have to move a couple inches back. And you want to pin those to the deck, okay? What that does, that stops everything from moving forward or backwards. And it gives you a pivot point because this this needs to move up and down pivot around that joint about a half inch top to bottom okay so you've got some flexibility in your tubing but you're just pinning that to your kayak and if i can find where mine is mine's pinned let's see if i can even get in here to see it mine's pinned all the way back here okay and then I have a different arrangement here. This arrangement is obsolete. This, this actually took the place of that. Okay. Um, at that point, you guys are in business. Okay. Now, if you if you want to tweak your steering a little bit, you can slide that tube back there in or out a little bit if you want to. And the same goes for this forward tube. You can slide in or out a little bit. When you're all done. And you know you've got everything set you're gonna drill a hole let's move this out of the way you're gonna drill a hole right there in your pivot piece and we're gonna send you a set screw and you're gonna run that in and that just ties this tube down so it doesn't slide okay you're done that's it after that you guys just need to deal with the wiring um, if you're going to put a switch plate in, do something like that. Um, now, when we, when we send you the kit, we send that stuff right there, okay? You can get, if you want, a switch plate from us with extra switches in it. And we'll send you a back plate if you want. And we'll send you, for a lot of guys, for some reason this year, I've got a lot of guys uh, who aren't bolting the motors on, they're making them removable. We'll send you that assembly too, okay, for your stern plate. But that's all extra, okay, and that stuff ain't cheap. It's a half inch HDPE. Um, we do put a piece of wood on here. There's a reason for that. Um, if we just made this all out of plastic, it's rock hard, okay? Um, and it doesn't give at all. And this is treated wood. Um, they'll clamp, you'll clamp your motor to it. And because it's plastic, really no matter how hard you clamp it to it, if you hit something like a log or a rock while you're moving along, it's gonna kick your motor out of, out of adjustment. It's gonna kick it off to the side, okay? And you don't want that. Um, also, what will happen, that'll happen to you one time and you're gonna say, wow, I'm gonna go back there and just tighten that, I'm gonna cinch the hell out of that, those screws and tighten that motor down. Well, this doesn't give. And what will happen 
you'll cinch that down hard and you'll you'll snap these horns off and the, these horns that normally stick out here with you'll you'll break them right there okay and that wood just gives you a softer material so your screws can dig into it and nothing will slip and you're not going to put so much pressure on it that you snap those horns off okay so that's that's the whole deal with the motor plates if you guys want those um that's that's it guys and you'll get a wiring harness we'll send you a, a harness that will be uh have plugs in it that will go into the bottom of your switch and then you can arrange whatever the connections are you want for your motor back here um, if you're going to use make your motor so you can take it off and typically the guys that take their motors off do it because they uh, uh, need to load their kayaks on top of their car they may not have an SUV or, or pickup truck or a trailer so in that case uh, I can get you a aircraft uh, electrical fitting it's four prong electrical fitting and it's water it's weatherproof and waterproof uh, and I can send that along with you. I prefer not to wire that in. They're pain in the ass to wire in. I'm just going to be up front with you guys. Um, so I would prefer just to send it to you and let you do the soldering on it. But uh, I, I, I can get those. I have found a source for those. Okay. Now, so you're going to take your motor off. Okay. All you have to do, you're, gonna, you're done fishing for the day. You want to take your motor off. All you have to do is uns unscrew that set screw right there, pull this, slide that off, slide your tube out, unscrew your motor, and you're home free. Okay? So it should take you guys less time to do this than it did for me to do this video. And sorry about the mess. I'm busy working on my kayak today too. But uh, that's the ins and outs of it, guys. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you get one of these, you get a project, I can send you some still pictures, just email me, um, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, pretty simple, stupid. Um, white lithium grease is what you use for a lubricant on this assembly, okay? One other thing I want to show you guys. When you get this assembly, this part, this upper nut here, and this lower nut here are going to be threaded on and they're going to be epoxied in plates. Okay? So they're going to be preset in their depth. Okay? This nut and this nut you can thread on and you're going to notice, if you can see it here, I got very shallow threads on here. Okay? That's purposely done because if you hammer a rock or something with your motor, where you've threaded this quarter inch aluminum those threads are where it's likely to snap so by using shallow threads I don't have that problem I would rather you hit a rock and bend this and you can just bend it back in shape than, um, than shear it off me I have to send you a new one okay a new one would be like 25 bucks um, I can make those out of steel I don't suggest it the reason being if you're tooling along at top speed and you hammer a rock and twist your motor sideways or you're going down a river and you get hung up sideways and you twist your motor sideways, nothing will give throughout that whole system until it gets inside of that sheathing and you can screw up the cable on the inside of the sheathing. Now it's that it is coated aircraft cable on the inside, but you stand a chance of, of botching it up on the inside and once you screw that up it's all over but the crying you're gonna to have to replace the whole assembly okay so that that piece of linkage right there that thing right there that's your failure point that's that's designed in failure points so it'll bend and then if it gets bent you guys can just bend it back in shape or you can send you a new one all right guys if there's any other questions you guys have on this I'm sure I went through this pretty quick if there's any other questions just email me, go through YouTube, email me. I'll be glad to get back with y'all. And uh, right now I'm repricing all this stuff. Uh, this year, my materials cost me as much as I was selling these kits for last year. 
so I'm in the process of repricing these, but they're still pretty reasonable. If you went to a, a manufacturer and had a push-pull cable made by them, um, just a standard push-pull cable is about 200 bucks, which is just stupid. Um, that's the whole reason I came up with this, because I just couldn't see that. And then you've got to have it, have the right throw on it, and you got to figure out how you're going to do a pass-through on a motor, and you got to buy all the end connectors. So mine just comes with all that. It's all preset, ready to rock and roll, and it doesn't cost that much. So, all right, guys, have a great one, and uh, hope to see you all in the water soon. Bye.